Hi all, welcome to Southern Cross Amateur Astro and our video user guide for APT where this time we're going to be looking at the current version of the darkness clock and the deep sky darkness calculator. So in APT the darkness clock is found here on the left hand side in the status window uh, where it shows you the current moon phase and this little box that gives you some detail. But I'm going to double click on that and open the deep sky darkness calculator which has the same representation at the top here. The only difference is this little bar you see flashing here. Um, that's just to tell you that something's coming up. If it's not flashing, it means that there's nothing really going on. But about 15 minutes before an event happens, like at the moment it's coming up to the finish of uh, astronomical twilight, so I'm going to get into, into full night. Um, so it's flashing to let me know that's going to be in about 15 or less than 15 minutes now. So that's what that is, about 10 minutes I've got. But that'll start flashing about 10 minutes, uh, 15 minutes before it happens. And that's the only difference between what's there and what's here. Uh, I'm going to use this. So on the right here you have the visual representation of your moon phase. Um, it's, it's almost up to quarter moon at the moment. But uh, I can't even see that with the clouds out there. So, <laughs> oh well. Um, the clock here is centred on midnight. So midnight's in the middle, and what you have is the boxes at each end represent your daylight. So it's from midday to sunset on the left hand side, and from sunrise to midday on the left hand so on the right hand side. So that just covers your daylight hours. Inside of that, this slightly lighter grey box here I've got, that's your uh, nautical twilight, which of course covers civil twilight as well. Uh, and the darker grey ones you've got there are astronomical twilights and in between them is your uh, night time, your actual night. The big white line of course is the moon uh, showing when it rises and when it's due to set. Now just so you know deep sky darkness is considerably the time where it's night so in between the astronomical twilights and the moon is below the horizon. So that's why you get your differences in deep sky darkness and actual night time. Directly under that, oh sorry, at top of that is the current day you're looking at, uh, which you can change by using the controls down the bottom here. But directly under it, you also you have your twilight and your sunrise sunset details. Uh, under that is your moon details, which is quite handy, especially if you post your image on sunlight where they want to know, you know the moon illumination and its current age, etc. You can get all that information from in here for the particular night you imaged. Directly under that is your deep sky darkness time. Uh, so mine, I've got a whole uh, one hour and 52 minutes. It starts at 1.55 and finishes at 3.46. So that's the time between moonset and astronomical twilight commencing. And uh, how much time of that's remaining that I can image in is what's listed on this little part over here. If you st open this up after your deep sky darkness time has started uh, it will actually count down how much time you've got left and it's the same with the narrow band uh, narrow band isn't influenced so much by the moon so it actually just takes the time between your two astronomical twilights and I haven't quite got there yet uh, there's about five minutes seven minutes I think it is yeah seven minutes until uh, I reach my uh, night session till narrowband time finishes so it hasn't started counting down yet and underneath that is probably the handiest section of it all um, you can use the previous and next button to move through nights and it changes the day and all the information up the top here as I said if you if you want to post some sites like to know you know the moon's illumination how many days it was old and everything else so that's what that one does um, it just shows you that and then you can just move back and forth you know, if you want to have a look a few days ahead or whatever. Now to clear that and get back to the current date, all you do is delete what's in there and press enter and it'll take you back to tonight. Now the other part it has down here is find DSD in hours. And what this does is it allows you to set a specific amount of hours you want. Say I want six hours of deep sky darkness and it will search ahead up to 60 days to find a night that meets that criteria. So I just click on find and we go ahead and the 10th of January is the next time I'm going to have a night with six hours of deep sky darkness. 
Now that's only deep sky darkness. Um, well, it's not going to make much difference for the narrow band because it's going to be about the same anyway. <laughs> I may get in a night or two before that. No, I don't. Five hours. Okay, tell me that one, Ivo. You have to look at that. Five hours and 60 minutes. <laughs> yeah. So I wonder what would happen if I did a search. Okay, for six hours. Oh, no, I can't do it. We need a deep, a uh, narrowband time search, Ivo. But five hours and 60 minutes. <laughs> I like that one. Okay. I can deal with that. Now, I'm going to go back to tonight's date. So delete, enter. I'm back to tonight's date. And I want to hunt for eight hours. And this is just what happens when it can't find one within 60 day, 60 nights of what you're starting at. So as you can see, it was not found over the 60 nights. Uh, so I'm currently in, where is it? The 19th of February, so up to then I haven't got a night with eight hours. So I can either lower the hours I want, or what it does, it will continue from the date you have selected. So you can just hit find again, and it will start at that date. And there we go, the 8th of March, I'll finally get eight hours of deep sky darkness. Of course, I'm likely to get uh, more than eight hours of deep sky of uh, narrowband time before that, simply because the moon's not as it doesn't have as big an effect on those imaging in narrow bands. So you can see I've just gone back to the 26th of February and I'll be able to I'll have eight hours of narrow band time. So that's the difference between the narrow band and the deep sky darkness. Uh, it's, here you go, I've got eight hours and one minutes, but I've got zero hours of deep sky darkness at that time. But that's how that works. Uh, it's quite simple and handy if you want to search around. And again, to get back to tonight's date, clear it and enter and that's as simple as that now as an added bonus uh, APT has released a mobile version of this an app uh, available on I iOS and uh, Android and whatever those watches they are the Google Wear OS or OS Wear or whatever they are uh, it's an app available for those devices that you can use for doing a similar thing to this the only thing it lacks is the search um, so I'm just going to quickly flip over. I've got a couple of pictures I took from my phone, a couple of screenshots, and this is it here in my Android phone. So the first screen that up the top here, that's what you open up with. Um, I've got the narrow band check. So the actual time here is the uh, darkness time for narrow band. If you uncheck that, you'll actually get the deep sky darkness time. And again, it gives you the date you're looking at, uh, the moon phase at the time. Um, your sun and moon information again the same as the other one what time your starts and end uh, the current date or the date you're looking at and likewise you've got the previous to next button you can move through back and forth through dates and now to come back to the current date like I said the only thing that's lacking there is actually being able to search for a specific number of hours now if you click on the uh, little map type icon at the top that opens this second screenshot here which is uh, locations so you have your current location and you can save up to three other different locations uh, down mean is a there's a campground down there I go to occasionally though I've never actually set up there yet um, I've tried to but the weather's never been uh, cooperating while I've been there and the other one was a trip I took uh, about 1500 kilometers each way to this place in Queensland nice dark skies good place to visit if you're ever there and of course I got a third location I could use um, and what you have then is this format button and when all that does is change the format of the longitude and latitudes you here from the decimals to uh, degrees minutes and seconds so that's all that does there is change that format if you select a different location hit the save and recalc and it will recalculate all the details up here for that location now if you hit the more button i'm not going to go to show you an image of this one uh, simply because the details it contains uh, might be a bit too private for me so what you can get in there if you hit more uh, it'll take your current location you have section or the location you have selected I think it's only just the current location um, and tell you tells you the country you're in and the country code so for me Australia and AU then what is calling the uh, admin area so your state your province your region or whatever your country uses to identify an area uh, the city or town you're in um, the postcode or zip code of the town you're in if it's applicable 
Um, the, if, if your signal's good enough, it'll tell you the actual address where you are, and it does that quite well. It's got my home here. Uh, it tells you whether you, daylight savings is in effect. And finally, the altitude you're at. All handy extra bits of information you might want at some stage. But that's the app there for you. As I said, it's totally free. I'll link it in the description. Um, there's no ads in it or anything else. It's just something handy to have on your uh, mobile device, your phone or your tablet or whatever, to have around while you're out and you might want to take a look at something. But that covers both the darkness clock here and the deep sky darkness calculator. And I hope people will find it useful. So I'm just going to sign off now, wishing you all clear skies. And I will see you in the next video. So take care all.